Hello students, welcome to the English class. We will again continue with our explanation of the chapter The Enemy, chapter 4 from the Vistas. Uh, for the last few days, I have been providing the explanation of the chapter part wise. I have already provided two videos. Today, I am going to start with the third video where we will be continuing and proceeding with the chapter. Right? Okay. So, we have seen uh, in the last uh, two explanation about Hana and Sada. We have come to know about them. We have seen that they had uh, came across uh, one American, a wounded American in the seashore. And uh, at last, after lots of hesitation and determination, they at last brought uh, the American back to, the, uh, this, um, to their house. They carried the American to the house. The American was carried to the house and brought to the room of Sadao's father, right? Okay. And uh, last class, we have seen that when uh, Hana told uh, Sadao that uh, not to save the American, Sadao said that he will be just operating upon the American because uh, he is, uh, because being a doctor, he cannot just refuse this particular duty. And uh, when Hana asked that the man should not be saved, uh, saved Sadao said that uh, the man may die from operation also. So we have done till this part. Okay. So today we will be continuing from the next part. Right. Okay. Hana considered this doubtfully and when she did not answer, Sadao turned away. At any rate, something must be done with him, he said, and first he must be washed. He went quickly out of the room and Hana came behind him. She did not wish to be left alone with the white man. He was the first she had seen since she left America, and now he seemed to have nothing to do with those whom she had known there. Here he was her enemy, a menace, living or dead. Okay, so uh, Hannah was pondering over this possibility, and uh, as she was taking time to reply, Sadao left. He said that something had to be done with the injured man, irrespective of the result. The first thing was to wash him. As he walked out of the room, Hana followed him. She did not want to remain in the room, alone with the white-skinned man. Uh, since she had left America, he was the first white man she had seen. Um, she had no contact with the Americans, whom she had met as they were her enemies. This injured man was also an enemy and was a threat to them. Right Now, uh, this particular line, if you can see, he was the first she had seen since she left America and now he seemed to have nothing to do with those whom she had known there. Here he was her enemy, a menace, living or dead. Here also we can find the, what we can say, the prejudice of Hana. Okay, Hana, though she, she was also educated in America and um, uh, she had many good friends in America. Yet, coming back to uh, Japan and during the war time, it is understood that Hana um, uh, is um, unable to have any kind of contact, means any kind of uh, love feelings towards uh, those people in America, right? So, uh, during the war time, Hana is still, um, Hana is also uh, instilling in herself the feeling of hatred towards America. And that is what exactly happens, right? She turned to the nursery and called Yumi, but the children heard her voice and she had to go in for a moment and smile at them and uh, play with the baby boy, now nearly three months old. Over the baby's soft black hair, she motioned with her mouth, Yumi, come with me. I will put the baby to bed, Yumi replied. He is ready. She went with Yumi into the bedroom next to the nursery and stood with the boy in her arms while Yumi spread the sleeping quills on the floor and laid the baby between them. Then Hana led the way quickly and softly to the kitchen. The two servants were frightened at what their master had just told them. The old gardener, who was also a house servant, pulled a few hairs on his upper lips. Right?
Uh, Hana turned to the children's room and called out to Yumi. Uh, as the children heard her voice, she went inside, smiled at them and played with her three-month-old son. As she held the baby who had soft black hair, she motioned with her mouth to Yumi, asking her to come. Okay, here we have some uh, words like there is the word like nursery. The meaning of nursery is... Um, means nursery is a room in a house for the special use of young children like small children can be uh, yeah, means in many of the houses we find that small children are kept in a particular room made for them right now let's continue okay Yumi replied that the baby was ready uh, for sleep and that she must put it to sleep before the accomp before accompanying her Hana held the baby and went to the bedroom next to the nursery with Yumi. Yumi spread the sleeping quilts on the floor and laid the baby between them. Hana uh, then led the then uh, led the way as they walked to, uh, fast towards the kitchen. The two servants in the kitchen were scared after hearing their master's words regarding the injured man. The old gardener, who also worked as a servant, was pondering over the news and pulling the hair from his upper lip. So we find that uh, uh, Hana have told to Yumi and uh, Sadao had told the rest of the two servants. There were three servants in total. Okay, Yumi the governess, uh, there was one gardener and uh, there was one cook. Right? So, everything was told to them and uh, this uh, the old gardener who is a very old uh, house servant, she uh, he was quite frightened uh, about the entire news. The master ought not to heal the wound of this white man, he said bluntly to Hana. The white man ought to die. First he was shot. Then the sea caught him and wounded him with her rocks. If the master heals what the gun did and what the sea did, they will take revenge on us. Here we find the this particular line, okay, what uh, uh, the gardener told, okay, if the master heals what the gun did and what the sea did, they will take revenge on us. Here we find a kind of uh, um, uneducated uh, comment of an old gardener, okay. He is very much afraid of the entire thing, whatever Sadao and Hana was doing, okay, like bringing this American. They were very much worried about this American. They are not uh, willing to... Uh, means accept the fact that an American, an enemy, should be there in their house. So, of course, uh, uh, this um, the, this old servant was very, very uh, unhappy. Okay, So, he spoke very bluntly to Hana. He said that Sadao should not treat the injured white man. Uh, he even reasoned that the man was destined to die. Firstly, he had been wounded by a gunshot. And uh, secondly, the rocks of the sea wounded him further. Okay, So, if Sadao healed the wounds given by the gun and the sea then the gun and the sea would treat them as enemies and seek revenge okay now what is the meaning of this line that is the gun and another thing is the sea what is the symbolism of this thing okay gun here represents the japanese army okay of course here gun represents the army of japan right and uh, sea sea represents the country Okay, these two things you all please write down in your own book also. Your gun represents the army of Japan and sea represents the country of Japan. Okay, so thereby where army and uh, where it means that the entire country is against this American, Sadao and Hana should not be helping this American in any way. Right? Let's continue. I will tell him what you say, Hana replied courteously, but she herself was also frightened. Although she was not superstitious as the old man was, could it ever be well to help an enemy? Nevertheless, she told Yumi to fetch the hot water and bring it to the room where the white man was. She went ahead and slid back the part partitions. Sadao was not yet there. Yumi, following, put down her wooden bucket then she went over to the white man. When she saw him, her thick lips folded themselves into stubbornness. I have never washed a white man, she said, and I will not wash so dirty as one now. 
right? So Hana was now considering the thing. Hana was also very much polite to the gardener and she was also uh, considering the fact. She was also frightened, though she was not superstitious like the old man, but she thought that uh, whether helping an enemy, could uh, it will do any good to them, okay? Still, because uh, they have already decided that the enemy should be helped, okay? So she took uh, Yumi along with the hot water bucket to the room, right? Hana went inside first and moved the partition to one side. Sadao was uh, still not there. Yumi followed her and uh, kept the wooden bucket on the floor. Now, as she saw the white man, Yumi's thick lips folded. Okay, and the expression on her face indicated her determination. Right? Um, he was uh, very much determination determined. Where does this line come from? Lips folded themselves into stubbornness. Here, yeah, stubbornness means firm determination she was determined that she is not going to wash this man or in any way she is not going to help this man in any manner hana cried out at her, uh, cried at her severely you will do what your master commands you there was so fierce a look of resistance upon yumi's round dull face that hana felt unreasonably afraid after all if the servants should report something that was not as it happened very well, she said with dignity. You understand, we only want to bring him to his senses so that we can turn him over as a prisoner. I will have nothing to do with it, Yumi said. I am a poor person and it is not my business. Then please, Hana said gently, return to your own work. At once Yumi left the room, but this left Hana with the white man alone. She might have been too afraid to stay had not her anger at Yumi's stubbornness now sustained her. <clears throat> Okay, so what happened when Yumi said that she is not going to wash this uh, white man, Hana reacted to Yumi's refusal. She screamed at her that uh, she was supposed to follow her master's order, right? But Yumi resisted very strongly and her dull face had such a dangerous look of protest uh, which even scared Hana. Um, she was worried, that is, Hana was worried that if the servants reported something different from what they what was actually happening, then uh, that could lend Hana and Sadao to trouble. Okay, so with lots of respect and dignity, Hana uh, changed her expression and requested, and very in a very respectful manner, uh, she told Yumi that uh, very well. Then Yumi may um, she also ex tried to explain to Yumi that they intended to bring the unconscious man into his senses and then they would hand him over as a prisoner but Yumi was still very resistant this resistance was still there in Yumi Yumi said that she was not concerned about their plans she added that she was a poor person and that it was none of her business to know about their plans so uh, Hana was uh, very uh, angry okay so she said to Yumi that uh, then uh, that then she should return to her work Yumi left the room at once Hana was again left alone with the white man she would have um, here we find that she would have been afraid to remain there all alone but her anger on Yumi's firm determination made her stay in the room okay so uh, she was very angry with Yumi but she continued right okay Stupid Yumi, she muttered fiercely. Is this anything but a man and a wounded helpless man? In the conviction of her own superiority, she bent impulsively and untied the knotted rugs that kept the white man covered. When she had his breast bare, she dipped the small clean towel that Yumi had brought into the steaming hot water and washed his face carefully. The man's skin, though rough with exposure, was of a fine texture and must have been very blonde when he was a child. <clears throat> right? So, uh, Hana was very much angry upon uh, uh, Yumi. Okay? So, she called her as stupid. Hana said that, uh, said with anger that uh, Yumi was a stupid person. She said that it was just an injured man. Okay? Now, with this firm belief and with this impulse that she has to do, Hana was so full of anger at the refusal of the maid, um, Yumi, that without thinking, she opened the blanket in which the man was injured. His chest was bare. Hana took a small clean towel, dipped it in the steaming hot water and washed his face. The man's skin was rough due to being exposed to the sun, uh, but it had a good texture and he must have been very fair as a child. Of course, that could be seen uh, through his face okay now there are some words like here we have uh, this uh, word 
blonde. Okay, what is the meaning of the word blonde? Of course, it means that he was very, very uh, fair. Okay, very fair um, when he was a small child. Okay, with yellow hair. Usually, blonde are those people who are having a very fair complexion and yellow hair. Okay, now let's continue. While she was thinking these thoughts, though not really liking the man better now that he was no longer a child, she kept on washing him until his upper body was quite clean. But she dared not turn him over. Where was Sadao? Now her anger was ebbing, and she was anxious again, and she rose, wiping her hands on the wrong towel. Then, lest the man be chilled, she put the quilt over him. Okay, so um, uh, why, Hannah kept uh, on cleaning the man's upper body as she had these uh, thoughts, right? She did not like the man as she, he was not a child anymore. She did not have the courage to turn him over and thought of Sadao. Her ang anger was decreasing and she started becoming restless. She stood up and wiped her hands with the wrong towel. Okay, she did, now her anger was ebbing and she was anxious. Okay, here we have one word and that is ebbing. What is the meaning of the term ebbing? Ebbing means to decrease gradually. Her anger was decreasing gradually. Okay, she was quite anxious that where was Sadao? So she stood up and she wiped her hands with the wrong towel. As she did not want the man to freeze due to the cold weather, she put the quill on the man on the on the man okay Sadao she called softly he had been about to come in when she called his hands had been on the door and now he opened it she saw that he had brought his surgeon's emergency bag and that he wore his surgeon's coat you have decided to operate she cried yes he said shortly he turned his back to her and unfolded a sterilized towel upon the floor of the tokonoma alcove and put his instruments out upon it. Okay, so, so Ahana very softly called out to Sadao. He had been um, on the door only when uh, Hana called him. He opened the door. Hana saw that Sadao was carrying his surgeon's emergency bag and was wearing his surgeon's coat. He was uh, prepared to operate upon the injured man. Uh, Hana asked Sadao that uh, did he decide to operate the man and Sadao replied that he had decided to operate him. He turned his back to Hana uh, as he did not want her to object to his decision. Sadao started his work. He opened a sterilized towel on the floor of the Tokonoma alcove and uh, placed his surgical instruments on it. Now uh, what is this particular thing Tokonoma alcove? Right, uh, here uh, first uh, we find that tokonoma is actually the word toko literally means floor or bed. Okay, ma means space or room. Okay, now in English, tokonoma is usually called alcove, it is a part of a room where things are displayed at a, a niche or an alcove. Alcove means a corner, okay, of a room in a Japanese home for displaying a flower arrangement like a kakimono or a other piece of art right okay fetch towels he said she be she went obediently but how anxious now to the linen shelves and took out the towels they are out also to be old pieces of matting so that the blood would not ruin the fine floor covering she went out to the back veranda where the gardener kept strips of matting with which to protect delicate shrubs on cold night and took an armful of them. Right. So Sadao asked Hana to get some towels. Hana obeyed Sadao and went out to get the towels. She was curious as Sadao was operating upon the injured man. She thought that the blood from his wounds would, could stain the fine mats which covered the floor of the room. So she got some rough mats from the backyard which were used by the gardener to cover the delicate shrubs from the cold weather. <clears throat> But when she went back to the room, she saw this was useless. The blood had already soaked through the packing in the man's wound and had ruined the mat under him. Oh, the mat, she cried. Yes, it is ruined, Sadao replied, as though he did not care. Help me to turn him, he commanded her. She obeyed him without a word, and he began to wash the man's back carefully. Yumi could not wash him, she said. Did you wash him then, Sadao asked, not stopping for a moment his swift, concise movements. He did not seem to hear her, but she was used to, this, uh, to his absorption when he was at work. She wondered 
for a moment if it mattered to him what was the body upon which he worked so long as it was for the work he did so excellently <clears throat> right so uh, by the time hana reached the room she saw that the blood had uh, flowed through the bandage uh, on the man's wound and had stained the mat beneath him right her effort was completely futile like bringing the mat from the outside On seeing the stained mat, Hana cried that the mat had been spoiled. Sadao agreed that the mat had been ruined in such a manner, which indicated that he was not bothered by it. Sadao ordered Hana to help him turn the man over. She obeyed him, and then Sadao started washing his back. Okay. Uh, then Hana also informed Sadao that Yumi had refused to wash the injured man. Sadao asked her that uh, did she wash him? He did not uh, stop. But uh, while do asking him, he did not stop cleaning him. He made fast, small movement uh, of his uh, hands and he cleaned him carefully. Sadao was engrossed in work and did not seem to hear Hana. Hana sometimes wonder that Sadao was not bothered who the injured man was. He was only concerned uh, in performing his. work well right because he was a uh, here of course sada uh, hana understand that sada was an excellent doctor and his work was also an excellent work you will have to give the anesthetic if he needs it he said i she repeated blankly but never have i it is easy enough he said impatiently he was taking out the packing now and the blood began to flow more quickly he peered into the wound with the bright surgeon's light fastened on his forehead The bullet is still there he said with cool interest now i wonder how deep this rock wound is if it is not too deep it may be that i can get the bullet but the bleeding is not superficial he has lost much blood right so uh, sadao instructs hana that she uh, would have to inject the injured man with a substance that induces insensitivity to pain and that is anesthetic okay hana replied that she had never done that earlier sadao said that uh, in a haze that uh, it was very easy sadao was removing the packing and now the blood started flowing uh, faster he looked at the wound with the help of the bright surgeon's light fixed on his forehead he announced that the bullet was inside the man's body he wondered that how deep the wound made by the rock was he said that if the wound was not very deep then he could get the bullet out he added that the bleeding was not uh, from the surface of the skin which mean which meant that the uh, wound was deep and the man had already lost a lot of blood at this moment hana choked he looked up and saw her face the color of sulfur okay so at this moment what happened hana's face uh, her face was the color of sulfur okay he looked up and saw her face was the color of sulfur what is the meaning of this time uh, of this particular line color of sulfur sulfur is a yellow colored element okay here this clause means that her face had become pale it has become completely yellowish in color right don't faint he said sharply He did not put down his exploring instrument. If I stop now the man will surely die. She clapped her hands to her mouth and leaped up and ran out of the room. Outside in the garden he heard her retching but he went on with his work. Okay. So when Hana saw Sadao inspecting the wound she could not see the site and so she coughed. Sadao looked at her and saw that her face was yellowish in color like the color of sulfur. Okay, Sadao reacted and ordered Hana not to faint. Uh, he did not stop stop his work and he continued inspecting the wound. Okay. Sadao uh, said that if he stopped uh, the injured man would certainly die. Hana put both her hands on her mouth, jumped up and ran out of the room. Sadao heard her vomiting in the garden, but he continued with his work okay so here also we have uh, two words one is leap leap means sada uh, hana jumped out okay and another one is retching retching means vomiting okay another term of vomiting it will be better for her to empty her stomach he thought he had forgotten that of course she had never seen an operation but her distress and his inability to go to her at once made him impatient and irritable with this man who lay like dead under his knife this man he thought there is no reason under heaven why he should live unconsciously this thought made him ruthless and he proceeded swiftly in his dream the man moaned but sadao paid no heed except to mutter at him 
okay so uh, as sadao needed hana's help to operate the man he thought that it would be better for her to empty her stomach so that she would not feel uneasy time and again he was reminded that hana was seeing an operation uh, for the first time and it was not a pleasant thing to see sadao was irritated in, in impatient as his wife was under stress and he was not able he was unable to help her due to the man who lay under his knife okay he was just like a dead person Sadao thought that there was no reason for him to make efforts to save the man because there was no reason for him to live okay uh, so sadao became merciless and started working fast the injured man moaned in his state of unconsciousness but uh, sadao kept on working without paying any attention to the man's pain groan he muttered groan if you like i am not doing this for my own pleasure in fact i do not know why i am doing it the door opened and there was hana again where is the anesthetic she asked in a clear voice sada motioned with his chin it is as well that you come back this fellow is beginning to stir she had the bottle and some cotton in her hand but how shall i do it she asked so uh, sada uh, said to the injured man that he was free to cry in pain sada was not concerned that the man was in pain he did not want to operate him and he did not have any reason for doing so right Hana and by this time Hana entered the room and asked Sadao for the anesthetic she was now quite determined to help Sadao okay feeling well better also which she had to administer to the injured man because she need the anesthetic her voice was very clear which shows that now she was prepared to help him Sadao moved his chin to guide her to the bottle of anesthetic he added that it was good that uh, Hana had uh, come back okay because the man had started to gain consciousness and uh, it was important to sedate him means to make him unconscious Hana held the bottle and some cotton in her hand. She asked what she was supposed to do. He told her to put some anesthetic on the cotton and to place the cotton near the man's nostril. Okay. But how shall I do it? She asked. Simply saturate the cotton and hold it near his nostril. Sada replied, without delaying for one moment. The intricate detail of his work. When he breathes ba- badly, move it away a little. Okay. So Sada instructed or told her to put some anesthetic on the cotton and to place the cotton near the man's nostril. Uh, but Sada did not stop his delicate work and added that uh, she should remove the cotton when the man started to breathe badly. Right. Okay. She crouched close to the sleeping face of the young American. It was piteously thin face. She thought, and the lips were twisted. The man was suffering, whether he knew it or not. Watching him, she wondered if the stories they heard sometimes of the sufferings of prisoners were true. right now this particular paragraph is also again very much important here we will come to know about another character general general takima here we will also know the feelings of the japanese towards the american so let's continue the man was suffering whether he knew it or not watching him she wondered if the stories they heard sometimes of the sufferings of prisoners were true they came like flickers of rumor told by word of mouth and always contradicted In the newspapers, the reports were always that whether the Japanese um, armies went, the people received them gladly. Okay, wherever they went, they received the people received them gladly with cries of joy at their liberation. But sometimes she remembered such men as General Takima, who at home beat his wife cruelly, though no one mentioned it. Now that he had fought so victorious a battle in Manchuria. If a man like that could be so cruel to a woman in his power, would he not be cruel to one like this, for instance? So uh, Hana crouched very close uh, to uh, this uh, uh, means uh, near the this American. He sat uh, in a squat and went close to the face of the sleeping American man. She felt sad and sympathetic towards him as she saw his thin face and twisted lips. She knew that he was suffering. She wondered whether the stories that she had heard about the torture meted out to the prisoners were true. The stories were like rumors, okay, which spread when people told them to others. On the other hand, in the printed media, like the newspapers, it was mentioned that the Japanese army was welcomed wherever it went, and people praised it for their freedom. Hana recalled an officer of the Japanese army, General Takima, who was cruel to his wife and would beat her. 
no one talked about it about uh, her about his uh, torture uh, upon his wife anymore because why because he had won the war in manchuria okay so hana thought that uh, if such a man who could be so cruel towards his wife then uh, would he not be so cruel to the prisoners in his captivity right she hoped anxiously that this young man had uh, not been tortured it was at this moment that she observed deep red scars on his neck just under the ear those scars she muttered lifting her eyes to sadao but he did not answer at this moment he felt the tip of his instrument strike against something hard dangerously near the kidney okay so um, uh, hana hoped that the man had not been tortured by the army just then what did uh, hana see some deep red colored marks okay the scars means marks injury marks on his neck under the ear okay so uh, immediately hana mentioned the scars to sadao and asked about them but sadao did not answer at that moment the tip of his instrument and hit something very hard okay it was very much close to the kidney all thought left him he felt only the purest pleasure he probed with his fingers delicately familiar with every atom of his human body his old american professor of anatomy <coughs> had seen to that knowledge ignorance of the human body is the surgeon's cardinal sin sirs he had thundered at his classes year after year to operate without as a uh, complete knowledge of the body as if you had made it anything less than that is murder right um so uh, hana uh, mentioned the scars to sadao but sadao did not answer at that moment the tip of his instrument hit something hard okay that was the bullet it was very close to the kidney okay sadao was not thinking of anything else he was happy to have finally found the bullet here we can find okay here that it is given um, he felt the, only the purest pleasure okay here the purest pleasure means of course a doctor's pleasure okay being a very sincere uh, doctor and a very excellent doctor and a doctor to the core of his heart when he found the cause of the entire the root of the entire problem he was very uh, happy that is the bullet okay so he probed his finger uh, his finger means it was very close to the kidney so sadao was not thinking anything else he was very happy to have finally found the bullet he moved his fingers inside the wound okay sadao was familiar with the tiniest part of the human body his professor of anatomy in america though an american professor had told him repeatedly okay or the entire class repeatedly that if a surgeon ignored the knowledge of any part of the body okay anatomy means parts of the body it was the first misdeed that he had committed okay to operate upon a body without detailed knowledge of it as much as the person who makes it ha- uh, has would amount to committing murder of that body so those professor would repeat these words in the class often right Okay, students. Uh, I have explained uh, till this part. That is anything less than uh, that is murder. Okay, till this part I have explained. Right. So uh, in my next video, I will be starting from. It is not quite at the kidney. I hope you have understood till this part. If you have any doubts, student, regarding the explanation or any of the lines or paragraph you are still unable to understand, then please. uh clarify it from me right in the classroom okay thank you then all